There's a charge for this. <laughs> Hi. Thanks very much. Um, Doug did actually uh, preempt you a few of the lines that I was going to say tonight. So sorry about that. No, it doesn't matter. I won't bore you too much with it anyway, actually. But uh, okay. Yeah, good evening. Very nice to be here. What a fantastic crowd here. Absolutely great. Um, okay. It's a little bit of acting work, and I feel even more nervous about all these people. It's a bit weird. Never mind. Okay, so my name is Ed Newbrook. My dad produced and photographed the now legendary cult, terrible, hilarious camp movie that is Gonk's Go Be. Uh, I do have some memories of, time, of the time on the set, uh, 1965, because I was only 11 at the time. Because as we know, the film featured many 60s bands, including Lulu, uh, which was a first ever film performance, and I think she was just 16 at the time when it was actually filmed. As Doug said, we had the Nashville Teens, <coughs> Graham Bond organization, featuring Jack Bruce, Ginger Baker, and fantastic Dick Hexel Smith. The director, Robert Harper Davis, who I knew very well, uh, was a great friend of mine, great to me when I, you know, I was 11 years of age, uh, was very instrumental, as we all know, in getting local band, along on the short, a recording contract with Decca Records. Uh, as Doug said, he, um, you know, he co-produced two of the singles with the arranger Mike Leander. And the band went on to chart with two, uh, two, two uh, hit singles, which were featured in the movie, Chalk Ice and The Letter. And as we know, also signed up to appear in the movie were local Lancashire bands, Ray Lewis and the Trekkers, the Trolls, and the Vaqueros and others. And like my dad, I have a very, very good memory for things going back many, many, many years. And I can remember quite a few days in my school holidays uh, of being on that amazing set <laughs> at Shepherd and Studios uh, and watching the filming. Uh, much to my great annoyance, um, I wasn't there for the famous drum battle sequence with Ginger Baker. It was my first day back at school. So I was very, very irritated by that. Um, I also know my dad really, really enjoyed the filming the, uh, the sequence uh, in Canvas Ads, which was then obviously done at uh, Blackbush. Blackbush Aerodrome, that's right. Um, and I think actually one of his cars was used in that. That was the, uh, that was the Ford Mustang. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that was one of his, one of his cars. Um, and I know that at the time, both Bob and Peter, because what they wanted to do with Gong's Go Beat was to have another Hard Day's Night help Dave Clark, five, catch us if you can type of success, but because that wasn't to be. But as Doug has already said, you know, we know he's achieved a, a small legendary cult status on DVD. Um, incidentally, actually at home on my sort of wall of fame, I do have original Decca LP of the soundtrack frame with all the autographs, actually, in really standouts still really well after all these years. And the order is, and, and the way that the order is actually of the, of the actual album cover, I've got Lulu, I think it says to lots of love, L-U-V, to, to add on it. The long and the short, um, a Graham Bond and the National Teams, which is uh, proudly on display. And as Doug also said earlier on, um, if any of you lucky lanky cats do have an original LP on Decca, do hold on to it. It can fetch at least 200 pounds, and don't take a penny less than that, okay? 200 quid, okay? So I've only I've got one copy, but there's lots of other copies that are from China and Taiwan, and, uh, but the original one of Decker is, is worth 200 pounds. I'm gonna just very, very briefly, I won't bore you for too long, but I'm gonna briefly divert my story uh, about the Beatles, so I'm sure there's a lot of Beatles fans here, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Right, okay. And I know Bill is a, is a big uh, Beatles fan. As I said earlier, you know, I was sort of, uh, well, all this sort of time when I was, when I was 11, 12, sort of standing around on film sets with Jerry hanging around. Um, I think currently the Beatles were actually shooting, um, or maybe a few months later at Twickenham Studios, they were filming Help. Now, Bob knew anyone and everybody in the 60s. He could get you into any place, anything. He knew everyone, everyone, everything. Now somehow, I don't quite remember, I think he actually smuggled me, I think I was smuggled on the floor in the back of his Rolls Royce to Twickenham Studios. Okay, so there I was pushed on the set, in my fake, which I thought at the time, cool, fake Beatles 60s jacket. 
sitting literally only a few yards away from John Lennon, who I distinctly remember him constantly looking over at me, winking, pulling faces, blowing raspberries, ridiculous things generally looning about. And actually, even at that time, I sort of noticed, I noticed a sort of vulnerability about him, which was uh, not so present if, you know, he, he, but he, he looked sort of quite vulnerable, and I can remember that quite distinctly. Uh, I think it was in a tea break, well, about midday or something, uh, and I nervously approached, and he was sitting in a sort of alcove with George and Ringo. Uh, Paul wasn't around on set, I don't think he wasn't around, just the three of them. Nervously handed in my autograph book and pen, and said, can you sign it for me? He picked me off the ground, literally, and lifted me up and said, the next fucking person who comes and asks me for my autograph is going to get their head punched in. <laughs> Both George and Ringo burst out laughing, and John too. Me as well, but very nervously. <laughs> uh, I told my mother never ever to wash that jacket again. So that was a good education I had. So I go very briefly back to my father, Peter, who, uh, uh, he had a really amazing career. I mean, really, really incredible. You know, as well as working in films, music and TV, he, in, the, in the 40s and 50s, he co-founded um, one of Britain's first independent jazz label, record label. It was called Esquire Records. And this is one of the first independent jazz labels that featured artists like Johnny Dankworth, Miles Davis, Ronnie Scott, uh, and many, many more. Um, and, and this, you know, he, he did this concurrently also with his film work. Um, he spent really basically his entire career in film, TV, writing, producing, photographing and directing. Uh, and apart from working with many musicians, he was also worked with actors, Omar Sharif, Peter O'Toole, sounds a bit name dropping, but Omar Sharif, Peter O'Toole, Norman Wisdom, Catherine Hepburn, Rock Hudson, Jane Fonda, and many, many, many more. But one of his greatest achievements, apart from Gonsko B, when I... <laughs> Um, was he, he filmed uh, Lawrence of Arabia with David Lee. And um, in this whistle-stop trip that uh, Bill has kindly organised and Doug, uh, up in Northam here for two days, tomorrow I'm going to Chester, which will be interesting. My father was actually born there, I've never been there before. And I'm staying at a hotel called Oddfellows, and they have an actual room named after him, which is great. It's called the Newbrook Loft, and they've sort of done it as a sort of tribute, and done it as a Bedouin tent. Uh, so I'm going to go up there tomorrow and just, uh, you know, have a drink and, uh, and, and trip down. So this is a trip down memory lane for me, really. Um, I think, I think as Doug has really said, you know, all about the film and everything, and, uh, and say it's a very great evening. I didn't expect to be quite so many people here, but really, really great and really nice, really nice crowd of people, really nice. Um, sadly, Bob left us, you know, he passed away in 1977, very, you know, a young guy, very, very talented, and his legacy, you know, the films he did, will go on for many, many years. He's very inspirational, a lot of the sort of directors that are around today. My father passed away in 2009, but, you know, in his 88 years, he crammed so much into his life, you know, he did more than some people do in 200, you know, everything. And I think he would be very, very amused and proud um, of the evening tonight, and if he was live, I'm sure he would be here instead of me. Um, and, you know, we were very proud and very hilarious that, the, that, that both Bill and Doug have organised a 50th anniversary tribute to Gonsco Beat. So thanks to them and everybody else from Lanky Cats. It's great. Nice to meet you all. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Red Newbrook. Can I tell you, um... I, 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 I mentioned this, and I didn't say this because Ed was here tonight. Come on, Rio. Because, shh, can I just tell you, Peter Newbrook was a real gent. Um, he really was. Um, when he asked me to film, he filmed the, the scene you saw. Shh, he filmed the scene we saw. And then, God bless him, busy though he was filming, producing, the day, a couple of days later he came, he said, Here, Doug, I rescued you a bit of you off the cutting room floor. And he actually gave me a piece of the actual film with a close-up of me. He, he'd had the goodness of, of heart to spend his time and do that. And he really was a lovely guy. And I'm, he really was. We got on really well. And it was a, a pleasure 
and I'm sure the lads who we hear from the groups will agree, it was a pleasure. It was, uh, it was made even bigger pleasure by filming in the studio next door was Kim Novak filming the amorous adventures of Mole Flanders, which occasionally we got a glimpse of Kim Novak, so that cheered the lads up no end. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight's been all about Gone Scobie, and a big thank you once again to our special guest, Mr. Ed Newbrook, come on. Thank you, Ed.